Hey everybody. So um, there was a question on uh, the Autodesk forums for Navisworks on if somebody could add a animation to uh, Timeliner. And if you're uh, not familiar with Timeliner, it's essentially 4D simulations. So um, you know you have the construction life cycle, so uh, the actual building being built. Um, you have tasks that are happening at certain days and times. And then what you do uh, in a 4D simulation is you will simulate those things, that essentially that building coming together on a timeline. So each item being built at what time. And then from there, you can start to understand that process a little bit better. It's a, it's better, it's a better visual for folks that aren't uh, used to uh, with uh, uh, P6, um, Primavera 6. And it's... Um, uh, for you know, uh, for planning a project, so you can start to understand if you might have constructability issues. Um, if you're planning one thing and uh, you haven't uh, um, addressed another issue on the site that has to happen beforehand, you can start to identify those things through that 4D simulation. So uh, the question was to add, you know, an animation to it uh, for camera rotation, but also for uh, the sets, so like um, uh, the elements in there to move as well. So while they're being built, they're kind of moving around. So something like uh, a crane being moved around the site. Now, that's easy to do with animations, but far as I know, uh, you cannot uh, incorporate an animation of an element being moved, uh, such as a crane or any piece of equipment uh, being moved while you're running the simulation on Timeliner. But you can incorporate an animation, a camera animation, uh, which is still kind of useful, uh, but ultimately, um, uh, or at least half their question can't, uh, you know, essentially can't be done in Navisworks, as far as I know. If you know uh, of a way to do that, I'd love to hear it. Um, feel free to leave a comment below. So. To kind of get started, what I'll do is I'll show you the animation, so what we're kind of working with. So this is an animation, it's a scene one, and it has um, a camera in it, and it has an animation set. Uh, the front panel right here, this uh, front panel along this building, is going to be uh, moved outwards. Now, again, that anima animation set can't be incorporated in Timeliner. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to move this off the screen, and then I'll press play. So you can see it kind of moves around. Now, uh, this is exactly what it's going to do in the simulation. What's not going to happen is this front panel is not going to actually move uh, in the timeline or simulation. Uh, so keep that in mind. But um, you can incorporate things like that in animation sets. You just can't do it when you, when you uh, uh, um, tie a timeliner into it. So let's jump over to Timeliner and then we'll take a look at kind of what's going on there. Um, so as you saw, there's two panels. So we have this one and this one on the front of this building. And um, what I want to do is go to task and create a task for each of those. So right now we have a task. We have planned and planned end date. Those are irrelevant because uh, um, our simulation settings are to actually use the actual start and end date. So uh, we'll be updating this in the example that we create. We're saying that these, this task type is being constructed, so these elements are being constructed. Uh, we manually grab those items and attach them. And then, um, and then from there, uh, what we will do is just jump over to simulate, and we can actually play that out. So I'm going to drag this away, and I'm going to press play. So it'll go through its motions. You can see the camera's kind of moving. And the reason why it's slower is it's actually going through a time. So it's, it's kind of spreading that, uh, that, that view, uh, camera motion uh, to the actual timeline. So it's depending on how long that is, you know, that the longer the rotation around that building is. So you can see the elements coming in, and then now they're finished. So when they're becoming constructed or when they're getting constructed, it is, um, you know, it's a more transparent color. And you can actually edit some of those things in the background. But uh, the main one that uh, for this video to focus on is in the simulate tab on Timeliner. And if you're not familiar with Timeliner, just go to the Home tab. And then over the Tools panel, you'll find Timeliner. So in this panel, 
uh, you go to simulate, there's a setting. And in that setting, there's an option down here for animations. Now you have a couple. You have save viewpoint animation. You have uh, a scene one uh, camera. Scene two is, is, if you remember, in the animator, I had uh, two different scenes. So every time you populate these and rename them, if so if I was to go into this scene one and rename it to something else, I would see it uh, going on in there. So let me switch back over out of the simulate, go back over here. And in uh, scene one, we would see that as an option. We would also see scene two as an option and then any other scenes that we uh, have. We can also rename these, which is going to change the options and the simulate tab and the settings in there. So what we're going to do is essentially go through this process from the beginning. Um, you know, if you've already got these things set up, to go ahead and just, you know, go into the simulate settings and apply that uh, animation. But if you don't, what we're going to do is walk through the steps of creating everything that we see here, the animation, um, the timeliner, and then we're going to finally simulate it and attach this animation to it. So uh, what we're not going to do is we're not going to um, attach this animation set, which is just moving elements in this example. Uh, we're just going to create a camera. So what we're going to do is, and there's a couple ways we can create the cameras too. We can create them in here. We can create a scene and then uh, uh, create some some viewpoints that way. But what we're going to do is just in the uh, model, we're going to create the viewpoints because I think that's really easy for everybody to do. So uh, first I'm going to delete these scenes. I'm going to say yes, delete it. Come in here. I'm going to delete this scene. Yes. And then we're going to start off with um, the uh, the animator and getting these elements um, uh, are getting this these camera views uh, set up. So over here to the right uh, in the viewpoints window, you can see I've got an animation and views. Uh, if you don't see the viewpoint window, you can come over here, uh, expand windows, and then you can find the viewpoint or the saved viewpoint window here. And let's find we'll find it right down here. So just click that checkbox. It will turn it on if you don't already see it. I'm going to delete this animation out of there. So from this view, and in this model, everybody should have this. If you have Navisworks, you have this model. Just go to your Open tab, and then you'll find sample models in there. There's an option for sample models, and this is one of them. It's called the um, Enviro Dome. So over here in the Save Viewpoints window, what we're going to do is right-click it, and then that will go to Add Animation. That'll create our animation. Uh, so now uh, what we'll do is create the viewpoints needed for this animation. So we're just going to create uh, two, two viewpoints. So we'll go to the viewpoint tab. We'll save this viewpoint. And then uh, we'll simply rotate it a little bit uh, to over here. And then uh, we'll save that as a viewpoint. So it's just two viewpoints. That's it. So we can see what's going on there. And what's going to happen is here's viewpoint one, here's viewpoint two, and it's just going to it's going to go from, the camera's going to go from this viewpoint and then uh, rotate around to this viewpoint. So in the save viewpoint window, we need to grab both of them. So uh, do shift and then select both of them. Sh um, and then drag them into the animations, to the animation. And then you can see now uh, that they're in there. If they do need to be rearranged, just uh, you can grab the viewpoints and shift them around in the animation itself. So now what we could do is test this out. So well, with animation selected and being on the viewpoint tab, we can come over here and uh, click play. So we can see that it's rotating. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, so now we'll need to create an actual scene. So uh, with the animator open, we'll right click, add scene, and then um, We'll right click and add camera. And what we could do is actually add from current viewpoint. So we can just go ahead and add that. And again, I'm going to drag this away and we're going to test this real quick. So if you press play in the uh, animator, we can see that it's uh, going through the motions and moving throughout the, uh, the animation. So, so we have that set up. We're good to go. So what we can do is actually um, just drag this off to another screen and leave it there. And um, now we'll just pull in the, the uh, uh, timeliner window. 
So with the time learner window open, what I'm going to do is come in here and just quickly delete these. So I'm going to delete that task, and then I'm going to delete this task. And now I'm just going to manually add two tasks uh, to this project. Now the actual start date and actual end date is what's being used. So if we go to the settings, we can see what's going on. So view, it's using the actual um, start date. So we'll jump back over here, we'll go into the actual start date, and we'll just leave it uh, as the date that you current, whatever you it shows up here, just leave it as that, and then we'll just go a couple days ahead. So we'll go to 31st in this example. Uh, same thing for this one. What we'll do in this instance actually is um, start it at the actual end date of um, the first task. And then we'll come in here and just do it a few days after the 31st. So let's do it on the second. So now we have our task created. Now in both both of these instances they're being constructed. So we'll we'll uh, set that to construct. Uh, if you do have another, um, if you if these do not. Um, give you know if these aren't all the options that you you want you can add other task type to simulate so keep that in mind but in this example we won't do that we'll just set it to construct now what we'll do is attach attach the elements so I'm going to drag this window um, away I'm going to grab one of these elements so I'm going to come in here click escape real quick and then what I want to do is grab uh, this panel. I'm going to bring this back in so that you can kind of see what's going on. And then over here with this first task um, assigned, what I'm going to do is come over to um, the uh, attach uh, button. I'm going to click on this and then you can say attach current selection. We'll attach it and we'll see that it's been uh, attached to this task. And now we'll grab this other panel. Well, first we'll make sure that we're grabbing in both ways you can do it so you can switch the task then grab the panel but as long as it's still selected and you switch to that the task that you want to uh, um, assign it to you're good to go um, just verify that you're selecting the right element and then with that selected I'll attach the current selection so in both instances these have been attached so now what we can do is jump over to the simulate tab and just uh, see um, how this works but real quick, since it looks like the animation is still set, I'm going to come in here and say no link, press OK, and then uh, real quick, I will press play. And then we can see the simulation in action. So it's at 78%. So you can see down here the percentage of completion. So it completed that first panel, now it's on this other one. If I unselect it, you can see the transparency with it. And then um, it'll kind of move through its motions until it completes. Uh, you can also change the way that these are, um, uh, the way they, lo you know, look like during, you know, pre, pre-construction, uh, during construction, and then after it's completed. You can show um, those in different ways. There is settings for that. So uh, there you go. We've got the simulation set up. Now what we'll do is just add an animation to it. So in the settings box, I'm going to jump uh, down here to the animation. I'm going to link that scene one camera and then press OK. If I drag this away, you can see it's already in the right location. So it's up there in that first viewpoint um, view. So this view right here. And then it'll shift over to this uh, uh, the second viewpoint. So if I go ahead and click play, you can see it starts to rotate around um, the building itself. So there you go. So that's how you. Um, apply an animation to your timeliner. So you may want to, you know, uh, rotate in around an entire building or something. Um, you know, it allows some, for some cool um, uh, timeliner simulations, you know, when you add those animations to it. And then when you're finished, you can uh, export that out. 
as an animation. So if I drag this back down, you can come over here and we can actually export this out as an animation. And then um, you can then, uh, you know, uh, send that file to a, a consultant or a client or um, view it with your internal team. So, you know, um, there is that option for you when you're finished with it. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let me know if there is a way to incorporate elements being shifted around or moved, such as a, uh, a crane on a site uh, in, act in an actual simulation and timeliner. Um, but I appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.